When you mix salt into water, you normally get a very safe product, like salt water. But under special conditions, mixing the two together can result in a massive explosion. So today, that's exactly what we're going to try to do. So I first saw this video a couple months ago posted by the channel What We hey Made, guys. and the guy just took some molten salt and poured it into the water. It started exploding and splattering all over the place, and I couldn't figure out why it was happening. <laughs> was it a chemical reaction or a physical reaction? I couldn't figure it out, but what I do know is I had to try it for myself. So with the help of a high-speed camera, we should be able to tell exactly what's going on. So I'm going to be using this Morton kosher salt, but I'm pretty sure that any table salt will work. And yes, you actually can melt table salt. It has a melting point of 1,474 degrees Fahrenheit, or 801 degrees Celsius. When it's molten, it's very water-like and fluid, but it quickly hardens into a mass of crystals, and it makes a cool noise when it cools down. This is a small stainless steel shot glass crucible I found at the thrift store, and it holds about 50 grams, okay, exactly 50 grams of sodium chloride. Next, I put it into my furnace, turn on the propane, and just blast it until it melts. This takes about 10 minutes, and you can tell when it's melted because the bright yellow sodium flames coming out the top. Well, let's put it into my high-tech pouring device and see what happens. That wasn't too bad. We survived. Well, I was expecting an explosion, and that hardly splattered at all. I'll try this again. Two, one. Alright, now I'm getting pretty disappointed. I thought this would explode, so I heated it up really hot and I said All I'm right. going to pour it in as fast as I can. And three, two, one. Oh my god! I got it. No way. This explosion was Totally awesome and a total surprise. I was expecting a little bit of splattering, but what I got was like a full-on powerful explosion. Look at the cavitation bubbles on the glass, and it just shattered it and blew that fish tank glass across my yard. I still don't know what's going on, and I think we should try again. Plus, an experiment has to be repeatable to be valid. That last shot was awesome, but I think it was a little bit overexposed, so I put a zoom lens on it and I cranked down the exposure so it'll be darker and maybe we can see better what's going on. If this one goes boom, we gotta protect your little dog ears too. Good boy. Three, two, one. Oh, I'm so scared. Yep, that was an explosion. Even at 7,000 frames per second, the explosion is nearly instantaneous. You can see just a small amount of sodium chloride salt could create this huge gas bubble. And just when I think it's over, there's more little explosions happening on the inside surface of this gas bubble. And just when I think it's done, boom! You know, that actually looks pretty peaceful. I mean, pretty peaceful for a cloud filled with molten salt expanding at several thousand feet per second that's trying to kill you. It still looks pretty nice. A close-up view was really interesting. Now I wanted to see what a wide-angle shot would look like. Two, one. Cool. It's really interesting to see the force of this explosion. The glass on the fish tank flexes back and forth and the whole thing jumps up an inch into the air. It probably displaced about two gallons of water out of the fish tank. This did end up breaking my fish tank, but not really. It just separated the glass from each other without breaking it. Now we're bumping it up to 21,000 frames per second. A little bit smaller resolution, but we gotta try. Alright, so we got a new fish tank and we're ready to try some other salts. The first one we're going to try is borax. It's like a laundry detergent booster and it also has use as a flux in like casting. You put it on top to keep the oxygen away. And it contains sodium tetraborate, so it's an ionic compound and we'll see if this one explodes too. 
I'll make these next few clips quick because nothing really crazy happened in them. I poured borax, sodium carbonate, and boric acid into the fish tanks. They were protected by the Leiden frost effect the whole time, so they were never able to contact the water directly, which means they never exploded. But it's kind of interesting why salt explodes, but not the other ionic liquids, even with a higher melting point. All right. So if this is chemical, I think I have a way to test it out. So some of you guys might think that it's the sodium and the sodium chloride that's reacting with the water. So I've gone ahead and I've chopped up like five grams of sodium metal. And what we're gonna do is melt it and pour it into the fish tank. So if it's a chemical reaction, we should see the same style and speed of explosion that we've been seeing so far. I think this is the stupidest thing I've ever done. Three. Well, that was pretty interesting and scary. Let's check the high speed. Sodium metal reacts pretty violently when poured into water as expected, but is it as violent as a molten salt explosion? So what I'm gonna do is take the two clips, put them side by side, and see exactly how powerful each one is. Between molten sodium and molten salt, there's a clear winner, and that is molten salt. I think the problem is the sodium can't get under the water fast enough, so it explodes right on the surface. Okay, I think I've got this figured out. I'm 99% sure this is not a chemical reaction, and I think I can prove it. I filled up a small stainless steel container with pH neutral water. I tested it for acids and bases before, and there was no change. Next, I poured in some of the molten salt. If this was a chemical reaction and the sodium was reacting with the water, or the chlorine was reacting with the water, we would see either an indication of pH gain or pH loss. So I did that, I poured it in, I tested it, and there was no pH change. The water was still neutral. Okay, so I think this is a purely physical reaction, and let me show you what I think is going on. Say this piece of putty is a, so is a piece of sodium chloride falling through the water, okay? So when it's falling through the water, I think a piece of water, a drop of water, I don't know, gets caught inside of the glob of the sodium chloride. And when that happens, that water is gonna get super hot and it's gonna turn into steam. So that's gonna expand to about 1600 times its size in a fraction of a second. And then all this is going to react with more water and more water and more water because it's getting blasted out from the initial one. And suddenly you've got this big thing and there's sodium chloride going everywhere and the whole thing just explodes. It's an exponential function, which means it's an explosion. Because it's still a mystery why the Leiden frost effect breaks down for sodium chloride and not for the other salts I poured in the water. That's still unexplained, I can't explain it. Maybe one of you guys will have a better idea. Finally, I would like to thank Nathan at Aimed Research for letting me borrow this high-speed camera. I've got tons of cool stuff to do with it. Now, Nathan rents high-speed cameras and they're an extremely affordable price. So check out the website, the link's down in the description, but don't rent it yet, because I'm still using it, all right? See you next time, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.